So I've always wanted to share aspects of my work, but doing a video during a photo shoot is just too distracting. So I've decided to do this video showing how I do my food shot. The interior shots are pretty straightforward and there's not much interesting points with them, but the food shoot to me is the bread and butter and it's also the most fun part, styling a shot, trying to make it look good and just playing around with the food. It's easy to look at a final shot and just analyze what works, but you can't just put things down on the table and expect it to be perfect right away. It takes a lot of trial and errors to get from start to finish. And it is much more important to understand the reasoning behind each attempt than to learn about the final arrangement. These videos are tailored towards people who want to learn food photography, um, as well as restaurant owners or PR managers, marketing, who do their own food photography and just want to improve their social media content. On editorial and advertising shoots, obviously there will be a food stylist and a lot of what I've done here are their responsibility on those kind of shoots. But as a solo photographer who are not working with a team, uh, especially on shoots like this where it's a lot smaller, you're responsible for all the food styling. So what you see in these videos are exactly what I see during a shoot. I style two camera, so I will look at the back of the screen make some adjustment, go back to the camera, have a look, and repeat until I get the final shot. So let's start with something on the simpler side in terms of styling. This is a recent shot I did in Hong Kong for a cafe slash restaurant of fish and chips. I shoot majority of my fruit shots in portrait. Uh, that's just because of the layer of the book itself and most of the time, I personally prefer portrait as well. It just gives you a lot more room to play with without being too distracting. So the video is also in portrait mode. That's why I've done the split screen. Just to show a bit more detail with the close-up shot of the food itself. Sometimes I do fiddle with what's on the plate, not just what's on the table. Keep in mind that the video is shot in 16 by 9 because that's the only ratio I've got on the 5D Mark III. The final shot itself is usually 3 by 2 um, but I leave a bit of room top and bottom for cropping in case it gets a bit shorter. So I'm going to pause right here just to catch you up on how I got to this point. When I arrived at the restaurant they had two different tables. The first ones are polished timber, more on the darker side, quite brown. And the other are these round black stone slate tables. Whenever I'm given the choice, I'll always go for the more textural, darker and matte surface. So for me, the slate tables are basically perfect. Glossy surfaces are always a lot more trickier to shoot than matte surfaces. Matte surfaces also shows backlighting a lot better. As you can see here, I've got the light coming from camera right from a window. And just see how well the texture shows up with this backlighting. So the first thing I always look at is the background. Originally they had these white steel frame chairs and they just stood out too much. Like they're so bright, it just distracts your eyes. I found these fabric dark grey chairs and they work a lot better. And I also really like the shadow that's cast on it by the window frame. It just gives it a bit more depth. I then decide to accidentally trip on my tripod, which moved the frame over a little bit, but I actually didn't fix it. Seeing a bit of the window was nice. It gives a bit of context as to where the light's coming from, so I didn't mind that. So as you see here, I'm basically just moving the chair, going back to the camera and just seeing if it works. I'm throwing in some colorways here just to get some sense of scale. Uh, I'm also pre-visualizing my shot. I know that I want the color into the foreground, the food in the midground, and some sort of drink in the background. That's what the water glass is for. It's not going to be in the final shot, but I know I want some sort of drink there, so I'm just using it as a placeholder. See how nice that shadow is coming from the right? This is because of the surface. If it's a glossy surface, that's not what it would look like. I always ask for some sort of side dish, bread, butter, 
cheese, just anything to populate the table with. In this case, I asked for a salad because I didn't realize there's a salad on the plate itself already. Look how similar they are. And as soon as I saw that, I know I wasn't going to use that salad. It was just going to be on the side. So first thing I do when the food's here is I'll try find its front, like the prettiest side there is. I always put my head in front of the camera so I'm seeing from the same angle and just rotate the plate until I see something that I like. Also the time I'm looking at the way it's stacked, um, how the light interacts with it, is it too much in the shadow. Usually it's quite obvious, you, you just know when you see it. See now we're replacing that water glass with orange juice. Um, it's basically where I thought it will be and I'll adjust accordingly once I look at the back of the camera. But roughly it's in a similar spot and it's good to be able to just pre-visualize that. So now I'm just doing the same thing. Basically 90% of food styling is just making adjustments and seeing what it looks like in camera. Here it's a bit too much to the left but I don't know that until I go back to the camera and I'll probably end up pushing it a little bit. And do keep in mind that uh, the actual shot is a little bit wider so it might look like I'm cropping out the plate but in the actual shot the plate is probably still in frame. So that lemon was sticking up quite a lot so I've turned it down but now it's hidden behind the fish. So I think I do go back and change that. They start bringing out different sauces and vinegar but I just know this is enough, it just look right. I don't know what happened there, I don't know why they're moving my orange juice around but I guess it doesn't really matter. I think they were rotating the coaster so that the logo faces the camera but you'll never be able to tell that. If you look at that little piece of chips just on the right side of the tata sauce, that little highlight there, it's very distracting because you can't tell what it is. It could be part of the bigger chips behind it, it could be just a reflection. So I pulled it out and now you can actually read it a lot better, it's a lot more obvious what it is. It's subtle things like that but it was a bit distracting. Um, now that I've pulled the chip out, see how much light it's getting and you can actually see the shape and it just reads a lot better. That lemon still annoys me, it's just at such a weird angle and you can see the seed inside and I do fix that later on. So you see the ramekin for the tartar sauce. Because of the curve of the plate it was tilted inwards and it just looked a bit crooked so um, folding up little napkins and just sliding it into the lower side to try and get a bit more level. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight but compared to what it was before it was just leaning too far. In case you missed that subtle change, I actually asked them to turn off the lights. That's one of the first things that I should do. Whenever you're shooting a restaurant it's always best to turn off all the house lights. No matter how bright the daylight is, in this case it's right next to the window, it's still gonna have a color cast as you can see in the shadow. Now again, it's just lots of little adjustments. Most of them doesn't really matter too much. So now we're swapping the orange juice with the coffee. So I wanted to do two different options. That way they have a choice between the two to put in the book. You're going to see this a lot of just small adjustments here and there. I'm still waiting for that lemon to be fixed. I know I've done it because it's really annoying me. It's, it's all you can look at. Basically what you're looking for is things that are distracting you away from your main subject. There we go. Which is the fish and chips itself. So now that lemon is there, it's not entirely obvious that it's a piece of lemon, but I think it's fine. Now since I fixed that lemon, I know I didn't do that for the orange juice shot. So I'm swapping out the coffee and putting back the orange juice. And again, see how I'm looking at the camera, I'm just basically seeing where the angle is. I'm rotating the glass to find a nice front for it and I don't think that's it. See how the straw is just cutting through the piece of orange and it's just so eye-catching. Where now it's a, li it's a little bit more nondescript, it's just going off to frame, nice and simple. And that's it. 
Here's the final shot again, just to remind you of what it looked like. That was relatively easy, it didn't take too long to get that shot done, because the props are pretty simple. For me, this shot worked really well, and I think the main hero, the main contribution to the shot is the table and the chair. Because of the texture and how simple it is, it created a nice contrast to the food itself. If you look at the orange juice and the coffee and the fish and chips, they're all bright colors, they're all yellow. If this was a timber table, the yellow on yellow would just not look as good as this. This is a lot more contemporary, it's a lot more modern looking. And with a surface like that, I'm happy to keep it quite simple because that's the style that it kind of creates already. If you look at my other shots later on, the wooden table I usually use in a more rustic way. There's a more mess to the table. There's a lot more food. With this, it's fish and chips, but in a way it makes you think of fine dining and I really like that. I really enjoyed doing this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll definitely do more in the future, so if you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe, like, and maybe leave a comment. Thanks!